Outdoor, some of the reaction, the, uh, which can we say, the Jay-Z NFL uh, connection. Remember when, I mean, this goes back, uh, you know, a child of the 80s, and so from a historical standpoint, you had, uh, back in the 80s, the rock and wrestling connection. And uh, they, they, was, they put uh, a bout between Roddy Piper and Hulk Hogan on MTV, and it did the biggest rating MTV ever had. And, uh, and then that led the way to WrestleMania, which we are, still have to this day. Now, I tell you this because it seems almost like now you've got the rap and football connection with Jay-Z and the NFL. And where do you go with that now? <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing right there that you'd sort of look at. I, I don't know here. But anyhow, uh, Tri-City Sports now, we will talk about that. Also, Tennessee, there's some big news there. You can, uh, beginning with the BYU game, ironically or by design, I haven't figured out which one yet, you will be able to have a beer at Neyland Stadium. Talk a little bit more about that. Of course, the big news last afternoon, and uh, Mark Lackey put it up on our Facebook Live page, the most followed Facebook Live page, uh, at the time on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Former NASCAR star Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his family have survived a plane crash in Tennessee. Now, Earnhardt and his family were taken to a hospital for evaluation, and it turns out they're okay. Earnhardt won't be. You heard it on the uh, you heard it on the sportscast. You heard Matt Polly say he won't be behind the mic for uh, this week's races. He will be back for Darlington on September one. Uh, boy, I, I mentioned this, and I know I'm repeating myself, but you had all these horrific images when you heard that Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in a plane crash, and for a while we don't know how he is. You know, that was being reported. And you thought back to the Daytona 500 in 2001, because I remember, well, we don't know how the Intimidator is. still remember that. I always thought Ken Squire was put in a very difficult position. Because Ken Squire had been brought back. Fox had just gotten in NASCAR races. And I still think Ken Squire, I, again, I don't mean to date myself, but, you know, who is the great sportscaster? Sometimes when you are uh, from a previous generation, your legacy has had time to build. And I think that's the way it is with Ken Squire. I still don't know of one broadcaster who I would associate, not even Eli Gold, more with NASCAR racing than Ken Squire to this day. To me, he is the voice of NASCAR racing, just the way I'm sure that to a lot of people, I don't know, uh, Howard Cosell would always be the voice of Monday Night Football. You can have Booger McFarlane, you can have Joe Tessitore, you can have, heaven forbid, Jason Witten, but uh, no, you, you've got, you know, seriously here, you know, You've got time for that to build. I don't know. Maybe a real old timer would think the same thing. Dizzy Dean in baseball, something like that. Okay, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He'll take the weekend off, and you did. If you remember that 2001 race, and we didn't know what was going on, and I remember how the broadcast closed. Squire was trying to behave eloquently. He was going to recite a poem about the Daytona 500, what we had just seen. And we were still kind of celebrating at the time Michael Waltrip winning it. He never won a race before. Finally, Michael Waltrip, good guy at NASCAR, guy who did the auto parts ads with uh, Little Lee for a while. Remember those? They're pretty good. Very likable person. Everybody tells me that about Michael Waltrip. I've not met him, but I mean, I've known people that really, you know, knew the family. They speak very highly of him, and he comes off so well. Finally, he was winning. Finally, he was in victory circle. And now Ken Squire was going to capture the moment in verse. But all we saw and remembered was the ambulance going to the hospital. And all we could think of was, well, what's wrong here? What's going on? Is this serious? Oh, my goodness. You don't suppose, no, it couldn't happen. And then a few hours later, you got the bad news that you just couldn't believe you know, that Dale Earnhardt had passed. Regardless, 
that's you, you that was your initial oh no or maybe it was Alan Colwicky in 92 and I, I mean just but thankfully Earnhardt's all right uh let's talk about this 44 years old uh he's got a 50 a 50 a 15 month old daughter Isla uh who was in the plane with him as well as his wife Amy brought his dog that's a new one. And there were two pilots in the plane. And NBC Sports said, we're incredibly grateful that Dale, his wife Amy, daughter Isla, and the two pilots are safe following today's accident. This is what they said yesterday. What about the dog? I always care. Big animal lover, okay? I always care about that. After being discharged from the hospital, we communicated with Dale and his team. We're all in agreement. Okay, take the weekend off. Yeah, I mean, I can tease a little bit, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I understand that, certainly. Who doesn't? They'll be back in the booth in Darlington. That's what they say. Now, a Cessna citation. See, citation. No good comes from vehicles named citations. You don't want to get a citation while you're driving a vehicle, be it a plane or a car or anything. The Chevy citation wasn't much. Remember those? The vertical radio. This happened about an hour and 40 minutes after Tri-City Sports Now. Uh, the Cessna Citation rolled off the end of a runway and caught fire after landing at the Elizabethan Municipal Airport. This was, like I said, at 3.40. Uh, they're investigating the crash. Uh, Sheriff's Office spokesman from Carter County Confirmed Earnhardt was aboard, but said he wasn't one of the pilots. I would hope not. I have heard, actually, of one old-time ball player uh, who once got drunk on a plane. I mean, we're talking the 1930s. Tried to take control of the plane, and the pilots actually had hit him with a fire extinguisher, and it killed him. Now, there's a fun story. Anyway, uh... Earnhardt, of course, retired as a full-time driver two years ago, but is still, you know, quite popular. Is he still the face of the sport? Hmm. Thankfully, right now, nobody that we know of hurt. Now, Earnhardt, remember, he does have some scars from his trade. Sonoma, 2004, got a second-degree burn, which I have received, and it's not a lot of fun. But thankfully, I don't have any scars from my burns. They're on my hands. So my hand, doesn't it look beautiful? Huh? Could be George Costanza on a hand model. You know, all this. Anyway. It was NASCAR's... Uh, he, he got some second-degree burns and that is still shown on his neck. Maybe he couldn't get to the water as quickly as I could. Second-degree means that all your skin is seared off. Okay, first degree, it's like a blister or something. Your skin is seared off. I mean, that's that. It's all the way to the bone on a third degree burn. I, I fourth degree. I'm. I don't even want to contemplate what it could be. Uh, anyway, fifteen time winner was Earnhardt. Twenty, or excuse me, uh, twenty six time winner was Little Lee. Most popular driver, fifteen years in a running. And maybe now one of the more popular broadcasters. But thankfully, he is safe and sound. We'll be talking more NASCAR with Jerry Bonkowski at 1 as we preview. Well, the truck race playoffs, they came about. And we'll be talking a lot more about these things. So, regardless. Uh, I will be talking a little bit. Tennessee is going to be selling beer at Neyland Stadium. This is the way things are going, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next segment. But I want you to know that uh, Asian House is open right now, and they've got their lunch menu on track. Now, all you got to do is mention my name. You'll get 10% off. Where is this wonderful restaurant that serves both Chinese and Japanese food? And remember what I tell you, sushi for lunch. I'm telling you, you don't get the lull when you have sushi for lunch. It's not like, you know, the big you know, fried chicken. I'm going to go there. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. You want to take a nap. No, sushi, high in protein, rice, fish. There you go. And it's exotic, okay? You don't want to be, you know, somebody who doesn't try new things. So there you go. Mm, sushi's been around for a while. Come on. 
Asian House, there in the shops in West Market on your way to Jonesboro from Johnson City, or if you're coming from Jonesboro, they're on the way to Johnson City. It's about a mile down. Leisure Lane is the street that uh, Shops in West Market is on. It's about a mile away from the big intersection, State of Franklin and Market Street. Go there now. Mention my name, 10% off. Perfect pairings.